Hello, panel. <laughs> I've got a question uh, for Tim Render. I want to take us back to uh, this morning's address by uh, Michael Grove. Or Gove, sorry. Um, he mentioned that if the unspeakable happens and we have a hard Brexit, there was uh, some sort of contingency plan and potential compensation payments. Presumably, we've got less than six weeks now, as you know, to that dreadful day, potentially dreadful day. What planning has there been between the Welsh Government and Westminster to deal with that potential problem? Tim. Uh, yes. Uh, something that we've been thinking about. Uh, we have pushed, indeed, Leslie Griffiths uh, at one of her regular meetings with Michael Gove at the beginning of the year, pressed hard on this, and it <coughs> produced some close working uh, with DEFRA to think through what the options are, and indeed with other parts of the United Kingdom. I was uh, talking with my Northern Irish colleagues yesterday who've got a rather different set of sheep meat issues in that they export so much live to the Republic of Ireland. Uh, but it's still incredibly sensitive. Uh, I think what we'd say at the moment is we are working, we've, we've had some conversations here with uh, NFU and others, HCC closely involved. Uh, DEFRA, I think, had a, uh, a stakeholder meeting last week, which I think uh, HCC also attended, I know HDB did, um, to think through what some of the various options might be, uh, a whole range of things, uh, uh, sort of additional uh, payments, welfare slaughter, which I don't think anybody particularly likes, but it's an option. Uh, those sorts of things to think through uh, what the various options are and how we might coordinate across the UK. Because I think we don't want to see a position where, different, where farmers in different parts of the UK are offered different uh, support. I don't think that would be, would be fair or helpful. Um, we are working on it. It will be a case of making an argument to the Treasury. Um, and that's actually very helpful to be able to work as all four UK administrations together. So I think, I think what I'd say at the moment is we are all working really closely to work through the various options and ideas to, to make sure the necessary resources are potentially there uh, so that we can take stock very quickly uh, Post, post a Brexit if that happens, if, if the no deal happens, to see what we would need to do to respond. But as, as Kevin says, there's a, there's, there's a range of factors there. I, I think I'm with Kevin. I would expect exports to continue, but at a much lower price, and, the, uh, uh, and, and a whole range of factors will influence that, and then we will have to see what we respond to. But there's been a lot of work with the unions with HCC, AHDB, uh, with the four administrations to, to look at what those options might be and how we might put them into place quickly. Okay, thank you. Has there been any analysis done of the longevity of how long those measures might need to be in place? Uh, yes, some thinking in that, but it's, it's a bit, you're predicting so many, so many uncertainties <coughs> Uh, I think what would be the response to a no-deal Brexit, including from the EU side, um, how long that would last, how long would the circumstances there, how quickly would we transition to a proper free trade agreement, um, lots of uncertainty. I think you would have to see people adapting. I mean, it, were you in that place, you would have to see some quite rapid industry change to respond to those new circumstances as well, but very much thinking, Clearly, the coming season is already committed. The sheep, are, the, the lambs are being born. Um, but you would then need to think, what do you do thereafter? Uh, and that would need to be something that the industry, as well as government, would need to think what you do about future years and how you respond. OK, thank you. I think we've got uh, Bernard here. And if we get the mic to Heaven for the next question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bernard Llewellyn has been of NFU Cymru or Elder Statesman, whichever you prefer. Um, we've heard a lot this afternoon and this morning about dietary changes, um, plant-based living, clean meat, all this sort of thing. And Kevin also uh, suggested that perhaps there'd be a, 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 a lesser in demand, certainly at home, for, for, for red meat. What perhaps we haven't talked about is, is, is self-help, because uh, I think it was David that talked about changes in production. 
And certainly when I was an awful lot younger, Welsh horticulture was actually quite a significant part of, of what we do. Um, what is Welsh Government doing perhaps to encourage that sort of thing again when you consider all these things put together? We do have the ability not to, to grow vast amounts of avocados or anything like that, but at least to, to, to bring a certain amount of that to uh, uh, the British public. Okay, um, Andy, do you really want to pick that up to start with? Sure, thank you for, uh, for raising it, Bernard. Um, I mean, firstly, I think it's crucial that we need to look at all sectors. Yeah, it's not just going to the, uh, the ones that we'd originally think of, like sheep, beef, whatever. Um, I think we could be careful about just entering markets just because they're there. I think we need to look about where we can sort innovative products, where's the opportunity for innovation. So I'd be more interested in looking to see where's the innovation in horticulture. One example is, is the, I think it's called the vertical horticulture that's technology around at the moment. So if we looked at these future markets in combination with new technology, that means that we could be doing something in Wales that's different to the rest of the UK. So it's, I'm saying yes, but actually look at it in combination with technology. I think it's about sweating all our assets as well. You know, some people make money from getting people to visit castles and the likes, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and other people make money from <laughs> from sliding down wire ropes. You know, we're going to have a, a, a zip line in South Wales soon, I believe. So I think it's about looking at the whole and looking at all of the opportunity. Let's not limit ourselves to one specific sector. Let's ensure that we sweat each and every asset that we got. Let's look at every business, look at every enterprise, and make sure we get everything we can out of it to protect our communities and create opportunity for families going forward. Kevin, did you want to add anything? I take your point, uh, Bernard, but I don't think we should give up um, on, on, on that sort of consumption pattern. And I think maybe if people are going to consume less red meat, we need to make sure they choose Welsh as a premium product and they consume more Welsh as a, as a, a, a premium product in their diet. So let's not give up. OK, great. You've got Heaven and I've got Alid behind him next after that. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, it's a question predominantly for Dr Render. Now, you made reference in your address to greater levels of transparency when it comes to funding allocation in going forward. With post-Brexit agricultural funding subject to review, um, what I'd like to ask you is, with, with that air of transparency in mind, will you spell out to us clearly today what exactly Welsh Government are doing to safeguard Wales' interests, and how exactly are you making the case for Wales? Uh, very fair questions. Um, obviously, agriculture funding is one part of uh, the, the whole package of what currently is EU funds coming to, to Wales. Um, ministers have been very clear all along that they don't want to see uh, Wales lose a penny uh, as a result of Brexit. It is not a decision in our hands. That is a UK government reserved decision. So it's about the political influencing, lobbying, uh, presenting the case. Uh, that is what we have been doing, and we have secured agreement from the Treasury that, in a sense, regardless of what happens on the 29th of March, whether it's a deal or no deal, that the, both the agriculture and structural funds <coughs> monies will be protected. We will maintain those uh, existing allocations uh, for the rest of their life. Um, going forward into future decisions, sort of the post-2022 uh, agriculture funding, will, like all of these funding decisions, be a question of us influencing and negotiating with UK government. Uh, ministers are working really closely. We had uh, the regular Four Nations meeting in Edinburgh yesterday, talking with Michael Gove. And indeed, there are things where... Uh, us working with DEFRA to make the case to the UK Treasury for funding for agriculture is a really powerful uh, thing, which helps DEFRA and it helps us. We are working really closely with those ministers, making those cases uh, to secure uh, as strong a case as we can for funding for Wales, both for agriculture 
which is my, obviously the thing I'm mostly focused on, but for those wider funds as well. But ultimately, it's not our decision. It's for us to influence and make the case. But that we are doing that with both the direct formal structures, but also indirectly. Uh, and I think that it's a very uh, high political focus of, of all our activity to make precisely uh, those cases to maintain that funding level. John? Very quickly, um, as four presidents from the UK, we uh, have agreed that we have at least, we will campaign for at least the same. Um, be under no illusion, uh, that was a good decision from England because they could have moved because our share is significantly higher on a pro rata basis than, than England and Scotland's is as well. Um, be under no illusion though, they've got a strong team out and uh, we're going to have to be on the very top of our game. So that'll mean everybody working together and we need to find out how we input and how we exchange information to ensure that we do get the best deal for Wales because this is going to be really, really important going forward. And we look forward to working yeah. with you on that, Tim, and engaging with that. OK, we've got Alid. Yes, panel. Uh, despite the uncertainty that we're currently facing with Brexit, I'm still very encouraged this afternoon because uh, we have David Jones here representing young farmers and I'm glad to see how enthusiastic young farmers in Wales are and had to see so many here. And then for Andy, having the food and drink board, and he's really glad that we have the food and drink board to drive this ambition. HCC likewise, you know, I'm really glad that we do have an organisation like HCC. And then uh, John Davis reiterated the, really the ambition that any few Cymru has. Now then, I go back to Dr. Tim Render. Now, can we, uh, you gave uh, John Davis a, a loose commitment to partnership working and, and working and policies in the future. Can you reiterate that commitment that we can, that, that we can have from Welsh Government to really partnership in strong commitments going forward? Yes. <laughs> really good to hear, really good. Because we cannot afford to be in discord at all. Because, like, you know, we're only going to achieve as strong as we are together. Uh, no, I, I, I entirely agree with that, Alid. And I think that we, we don't have the sort of technical answers. We don't know how to make some of those things, uh, what makes the most difference uh, on, a, on a farm. What, what are the interventions that will deliver most effectively uh, to increase the productivity, uh, to, it, to address some of the challenges that Kevin set out in, in terms of uh, how, to, how to respond to some of those market demands. So we need the ideas uh, how to make things work, what works most effectively uh, from uh, the unions. And one of the things thinking to the longer term around uh, farming support going forward is it's the sheer process and bureaucracy. How do we make that as efficient and simple as possible for farmers? And again, to work with, as we have done very, very well, I think, in the past with, with, with NFU Cymru, around the design of some of those schemes, the operational design, uh, not just the, the what are we trying to achieve, but how do we do it, and very much build and work with you uh, on those things. So yes, I'm, I'm, I very much want to work with you uh, and other stakeholders to achieve that. OK, we've got a question in the front here. Hello, uh, my name is Ted. Um, as a red meat producer, I've been tearing my hair out about all the negative press to do with red meat, especially when it comes to the environmental arguments. Now, shouldn't we be kind of fighting facts with facts and encouraging more high quality research across the range of research stations we have in Wales to reinforce our arguments when we come back to it? And that's probably a question more for Kevin and Tim. Sorry, so was the, the question about um, climate change or...? Yeah, so yeah. more specifically with grazing, um, yeah. ruminants, and, uh, yeah. you know, people say it's bad for the environment, but the figures aren't usually coming from very good quality research or, in fact, are yeah. really the okay, truth. Okay, let me give you two facts very quickly. It's absolutely about the environment. If you take an animal gaining 1.2 to 1.4 a day, it's half the carbon footprint of 1.8, you know. Our beef here in, in Europe is half the footprint of sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, so you know we need to make sure that we're using our Welsh figures and our Welsh things, okay? Because we can turn this climate argument to our advantage. Also health, massive advantages in terms of health, in terms of nutrient 
density, in terms of protein nutrient density, real advantages. We need to turn these debates and these discussions to our advantage in the way it has been doing. Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't think we need a great deal more research. I think it's about uh, making sure that when we get fake news, as quite often um, the vegan uh, sort of elements are peddling really quite fake news and poor facts, and um, they use one fact that's, that's probably right in one context, and then they use it across the entire market. And as John says, you know, we've got a good story to tell here, and we try to get on the front foot in November and December before Veganuary uh, to try and get those real facts about Welsh red meat uh, production across ahead of the um, media barrage that we knew we'd get in, in January. But, you know, we, we don't really get much credit for the sequestration that we do in grassland. You know, grassland sequesters 70 times more carbon than trees. You know, and it's those points which start to get uh, a bit esoteric, but it's those points we need to get across, absolutely. OK, good. We've got a lot of questions coming. Have we got any questions? I would like one for David, really, in the YFC, if possible. <laughs> yep, we'll have one in the front here, please. Hi, um, I'd just like to ask, we've heard a lot about cooperation between businesses and especially with David with, um, with the young people and the implementation of using technology. How can we make it easier for any business to cooperate and especially young people to be able to cooperate with existing businesses within the agricultural industry in Wales? That is the million dollar question, I think. Um, we've seen an increase in the uptake on the venture programme with Farming Connect. We've certainly seen a lot more uh, older generation farmers coming forward, but that is purely because of the uncertainties Brexit has brought, and they're seeing it as an excellent opportunity to exit the industry. On the flip side, uh, young farmers have been needing something like this for years, but there's that uncertainty at the minute to go into such an industry with all that's going around. But it's, it's such a, a good, uh, program to build on, I think, and we are so lucky to have such a program, and we can only build on that, I think. Okay, right, we have got a lot of questions. I'd like to take two. I'm going to take Kath, and I'm going to take Rob, please. Keep them short, if possible. We've only got a few minutes. Um, it, the question for David and Tim, really. Um, you mentioned about diversification and the importance of farms being economic and, and profitable, and that's important for the um, you know, the industry as a whole. Um, Dr. Rendu mentioned about efficiency and bureaucracy. What is uh, the, the department within Welsh Government doing to collaborate with the other departments in Welsh Government around planning to make those opportunities for our future generations to get that <coughs> process quicker, slicker, and a lot more bureaucratically efficient? I'll just take the question from Rob before we come Tim on that. Okay, yeah, a question for uh, Kevin and Tim. As Hubby Hub Cymru is supportive of mixed grazing in the uplands, are you aware of the reality of TB regulations that are crucifying the beef industry in Wales? As a farmer in the area with the largest area, uh, open area in Wales, is it impractical to sustain a profitable enterprise due to standstill, shutdown, with financial and emotional stress caused by the disease? Okay, right. Tim, we'll start on the, the, the first question for Kath, please. Uh, on Planning, yes, absolutely uh, understand that this is very often a frustration uh, in terms of opportunities to diversify. Um, I mean, we have worked closely with planning policy colleagues in Welsh Government to set the overall framework uh, to allow some of, some of those uh, opportunities um, and a variety of things. A lot of this is about local implementation by local authorities and those local choices, I think probably more so than uh, some of the overall uh, planning <coughs> policy. Um, but I mean, I think how we ensure that planning authorities throughout Wales are looking at agriculture and seeing that diversification and the options that you're all looking to do are positive things for the local economy and the, and the way the local uh, uh, area can develop rather than just entirely in a negative sense. I think there's a, there's a sort of culture shift that we need to try and secure. Uh, I'm not sure that it's about the, the overall planning uh, rules that uh, are set by Welsh Government uh, as much as uh, the way some of those are implemented. 
Uh, but I think that there is more work that we need to do to help people understand uh, that diversification, that change, that development needs to be part of what is allowed and supported to help ensure the long-term viability and sustainability of the industry overall. Okay, Dave, is there anything you want to add on the planning? Now, I'm no, f I'm no big fan of tourists, I'll be honest. They leave my gates open all the time <laughs> and they're pain in the backside. But there are many farmers in my area doing excellent work in utilising tourism to their best advantage. And I can only encourage, so many farmers are solely responsible on producing beef and lamb. And if you, you, it's possible for you to spread the risk, not have all your eggs in one basket, quite simply go for it and try and ride out the storm if it's coming. Rob, a good point on TB. I'm going to ask our president to just comment yeah, on that. Absolutely right, Rob. TB is holding back people where there is opportunity. You know, it helps in terms of mixed grazing very often. It helps in terms of having another um, income stream. So it's really, really important to get this sorted. We are working on it, and you know, there will be some action here going forward. You know, we have a situation where we have a young couple. They were invested in all their equipment, and they weren't able to stock the farm then. So that's a real, real problem. They've done all of their uh, proper research business plan everything and they'd had the first lot through and they weren't then able to restock so you know it's a real challenge and we've got to get it sorted okay uh, Gary J just shout Gary yeah, just, uh, Gary Evans um, with all the warm words about cooperation it was a bit disappointing to see uh, Welsh Government introduce whole Wales uh, water regulation just wondered how your whole Wales uh, regulation rules will differ from a whole Wales NBZ and what targets you Tim. That's me. Uh, as, as John said, there's, 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 there's more work that we, we're doing and doing with, uh, uh, with NFU uh, around the, the precise details on that. I think I go back, to, let me just take a step back on, on this. And I mean, I think, sadly, uh, we have seen the situation in terms of uh, agricultural pollution incidents Increasing, We've had more last year than, any, than in any of the previous three years. Uh, this is one of those things that comes back to that brand image, that sustainability image, uh, that the, the, the whole public perception, I think, of farming. This is, this is one of those things uh, I'm afraid that we, that we really need to, to get gripped, and that's, uh, and that's uh, why we felt it's necessary to go down uh, the regulation route. Uh, it's, it's been something that, frankly, has been getting a bit worse. Uh, it's something that I think badly, un potentially undermines a lot of the things that we've been talking about uh, around public perception, uh, around the sustainability image uh, of Welsh farming. But I think there is a piece now of how we take forward uh, the work to, to make this uh, work in the uh, best way that we can at an operational level and as John said that's that's something that we are now uh, looking at. Let me be very clear we are responsible for 16% of pollution incidents at present that is 16% too many we will and we can act to improve that but we will work in a more cohesive way now and a better way which is a better partnership enough said we'll put what was proposed behind us hopefully. S sorry, can I just come to Stephen just to comment on that quickly? With respect to Dr. Tim, you know, you're right, absolutely right. It's the pollution. Every time I've met with the Cabinet Secretary and I've met with the Board of NRW, it was always the pollution incidents that were brought up. Now, having the heavy hand of regulation isn't actually going to make a big difference to, the, uh, to, to pollution incidents because, you know, if you've got a closed period and then all of a sudden that closed period comes to an end, there's going to be a massive slurry put out and there's far higher risk of pollution. Now, what you have, what NRW have done is appointed agricultural advisors and, I, and, and that's exactly what we've been asked for, to work with the industry. I've had the visit, uh, we're a dairy farm, they're targeting dairy farms right across Wales at the moment. We had the visit a week today. It's a great way of doing it. That's a, a getting to that point of, of addressing pollution incidents. Uh, and and uh, David talked about uh, 
about technology. The technology is there to, to address that. The voluntary initiatives could, could take us down that road along with what the NRW are doing. We don't need this heavy hand of regulation. We're not Holland where, where there's intensive farmers right across the, the, the piece. And we're talking about lots of farmers in here that hardly sow any fertilizer, put slurry out. But they're going to be have to make these full reports. That it's, a, it's a consultant's dream to have uh, all this regulation come along. So. Thank you.